With regard to democracy, Sir Winston Churchill, former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, once famously said, Many forms of governments have been tried and will be tried in this world of sin and woe. No one pretends that democracy is perfect or all wise. Indeed, it has been said that democracy is the worst form of government, except for all those other forms that have been tried from time to time. He is referring to the fact that democracy is the best system that we have come up with thus far, but by no means is saying that democracy is perfect. However, many elected government officials act like our current form of government is, and always will be, the best system. Let me explain why our current form of democracy, at least in Australia, is far from perfect. Voting. Many people I've spoken with equate voting with fairness. That is, if we can vote, then the result of that vote is fair. I can't think of anything further from the truth. The general premise is that the candidate who gets more than 50% of the vote is elected. However, in reality, very few candidates get more than half the votes. So politicians, in their wisdom, introduced a system called preferential voting. In Australia, we have a lower house, the House of Representatives, and an upper house, the Senate. All adults must vote, and they do so using some form of preferential voting. The House of Representatives uses full preferential voting, whereas the Senate uses optional preferential voting, with proportional representation. Either way, it's a convoluted mess. Governments are elected that do not have the support of the majority of the people. For example, the latest federal election held in July 2016 resulted in a win by the Liberal National Coalition. Together, they only received 41.8% of first preference votes. Liberal, 28.47, Liberal National Party, 8.52, and the Nationals, 4.61%. That means 58.2% of Australian voters did not vote for them. But, but guess what? Regardless of whether we wanted to vote for them or not, we were forced to. Full preferential voting means we must place them somewhere in our list of preferences, even if we have no desire to support them in any way. It's a joke. I have never voted for the winner in any Australian election. <clears throat> I have probably voted in about 30 elections, local, state and federal. That means my vote has never counted. I have never had somebody hold office in Australia that actually represents me. And this is probably true for a significant proportion of Australians. The fact that 58.2% of Australians this year did not vote for the Liberal National Coalition means that the majority of Australians are disappointed with the result. Is this democracy? I don't think so. People. Every elected official, at least in Australia, is human. And what's wrong with humans? Everything. People are corrupt. People are irrational. People can be influenced to make the wrong decision. It was recently reported on the ABC that foreign donations from China could be influencing Australian politics. Whose democracy is this anyway? China's or Australia's? Obviously people love money, and politicians are only human, right? And let's not forget the recent news of Senator Sam Dastyari accepting donations from a company with links to the Chinese government who repaid travel debts on his behalf. He has also been known to support China's position in the South China Sea dispute, saying that the South China Sea is China's own affair. It's wonderful what money can do to a thriving democracy. Party politics. Individual politicians basically have to follow the party line. We have only a couple of major parties in Australia. Liberals slash Nationals and Labor. The Greens have a fairly strong following, but are rarely elected in the lower house due to a voting system that favours the two big parties. When you see interviews with politicians on TV, they rarely express their own views. It's almost always a repetition of the same old party rhetoric. It's excruciating to watch. We may as well not vote for individuals and instead vote for parties instead. That's basically what the average Australian voter does anyway. What happens when we allow our democracy to be controlled by a couple of large parties? Well, they tend to forget that they are there to serve the people. Instead, they opt to help out big business, international corporations, and reduce public services such as health and education in order to fund tax cuts for the wealthy. The media. The media are supposed to be there to hold power accountable, to be watchdogs. But instead, they usually support one party over the other. Whether it's Fairfax Media, News Limited, or the ABC, they all have their own political leanings. They all promote the two-party system that convinces us that we must vote one way or the other. The media are basically conspiring to hollow out our democracy. 
Anthony Painter, contributor for Policy Network, once stated, The modern state is designed around competing elites who are insiders in the system. The electoral system maintains this duopoly. Around this elite contest, a media is constructed and organised. Party organisations exist to manufacture majorities to serve it. This system is replicated over time. The state, the party system, the media are all tied together in an enduring status quo. Corruption. The biggest problem with democracy as we know it is that it is corruptible. Every part of it is open to corruption. The parties bend to the will of their biggest donors. Elected officials go along with the party line in fear of losing their job. Voters are convinced to vote one way or another by the mass media. It's not really democracy at all, it's just called democracy. We may as well rename ourselves the Democratic People's Republic of Australia. It's not serving the people, it's serving the wealthy. And what's the common factor in all of this corruption? The answer is simple. People. Whenever there are people involved, there will be greed, corruption and dishonesty. To fix democracy, we probably need to take people out of the equation. Future democracy. The only way to remove corruption is to remove elected officials. Instead of people voting for a person to hold office for three or four years, we need to instead have a more participatory democracy that does not require leaders. Imagine a future system that involves everybody in the decision making. After a problem has been identified, instead of elected officials making all the decisions, solutions are proposed by the general public probably through the likes of a smartphone app or similar. A discussion takes place over a predetermined period of time, and then solutions can be voted on by everybody who wishes to participate. The most popular solution is then carried out. This would allow the average citizen to have a direct say in the shaping of their society. Imagine a scenario where your city has a growing number of potholes in the pavement. People who live in that area will quickly submit a new issue to the National Register. Individuals will then be able to propose solutions, one of which suggests that an automated fleet of drones should be produced that can fly around fixing potholes. This turns out to be the most popular solution as nobody really wants to go outside in the hot sun filling in potholes. Resources are automatically redistributed in order to get a team of engineers and programmers working on the proposed solution. Within a few weeks, a prototype has been developed using existing technology as well as a few new ideas to create the Hole Buster 3000. It drives around with a load of bitumen, filling in holes as it finds them. Over a couple of months, the technology is refined, and then multiple Hole Busters are assigned to every city. Quickly, the whole issue of potholes becomes a thing of the past. Similarly, if it turns out society has produced too many Hole Busters, as there are no more potholes, People can submit a suggestion as to how to fix the problem. Maybe they can be used as mobile advertising stations, as well as road repair drones. Just as feudalism was slowly replaced by absolute monarchies, and monarchies were overthrown in favour of republics, so too will democracy be replaced by a better system. The fact that we live in the digital age would indicate to me that technology must play a large part in any future system of government. I foresee with the advent of artificial intelligence, we will no longer need human leaders with all their foibles. Of course, people will still have a part to play, but our inferior intellects are not designed to handle the complexities of an advanced, digitally interconnected and automated future society. Bring on the bots, I say.